All right, simple concept, but some people not too good at it and can harm their cars pretty bad. And what you're just gonna wanna do with setting your gear mesh is like, I'm just using an e-rebuild as an example here. You're just gonna wanna take off the bolt holding the gear cover on And all cars have a gear cover and they all have bolt or bolts that hold it on. And once you get your gear cover off, then you can set your gear mesh. And say, like, if you go off a jump really high and you land and knock your motor loose, then your gear mesh isn't set right and your motor's loose. If you come down hard and knock it loose. That's not you don't want your motor loose. Especially if the pinion gear doesn't match up with the spur gear. The spur gear can move when the pinion's not moving, of course your car's not gonna move. But a couple things you can do with setting your gear mesh is I mean there's a couple ways. One that I do is just leave your motor mount loose, maybe tighten it just a tad. Loosen it a bit. <laughs> and just put it as tight as it'll go to the spur gear. So the car is very, very, very hard to move. And then just you're just gonna want to let out on the motor and just move it back and forth. move it forward and back pretty quick in that and it'll just kind of space itself apart to the right distance and that seems to work pretty good with me but some other people say that you want to use a piece of paper it's, it's actually what it says in the Traxxas owner's manual for a lot of their cars is you're just supposed to take a piece of paper and feed it in between the pinion and the spur gear and if it goes in and comes back out easy enough your gear mesh is set. That's one way I showed you another way but in a situation that the paper trick won't work with setting your gear mesh is if you have a low C micro and one of the reasons that is is because the spur gear is really small, has really fine teeth on it. And if you put the piece of paper on there, I mean the paper is almost as thick as the gears on the spur gear. So it's not really going to work. It's not really going to push in real well and set it right. So with that, you're just going to kind of have to leave your motor mount loose and kind of either move it back and forth it'll kind of space itself out or you're just going to kind of have to experiment with having it different lengths because I mean if it's set right it'll roll back and forth easy but if it's set too tight it'll be really hard to move and if it's too loose it won't match up with the spur gear so you're just gonna kind of have to do trial and error on that. But a couple things to keep in mind if you're choosing pinion and spur gears is like this is a Traxxas Rustler spur gear and a Traxxas or a pinion gear I'm sorry and a Traxxas spur gear and they should match up perfect roll around perfect no restraint all the teeth match up right there are no grinding sounds but say you find an 18 tooth pinion gear like on the main hobbies and you see in your gearing chart for your Traxxas Rustler or Stampede that you can change the gearing to like a 86 tooth spur and like 18 tooth pinion kind of just picking those numbers out of air and you see the pinion gear and you buy it and it gets here and it has big teeth well then you ordered a like an Emax gear and that won't match up with the teeth that's on a 
tracks the rustler. I mean, nothing will work. Makes noise isn't matching up right. So in that case, kind of sucks. You're just gonna have to order the right pinion gear for your spur gear on your car. And with that, thanks for watching.